In this video, we're going to use Oslo EDU to do some basic exercises, the kinds of exercises you might do in an introductory physics class. It shows some of the power of Oslo and how easy it is to use. Everything that's done in this video, although I'm using Oslo EDU, is certainly possible to do in our premium version, Oslo Premium. So the first thing that happens in a class is we do lots of thin lens approximations, but you might want to know what's happening with a thick lens. Oslo is extremely good at doing praxial calculations relative to thick lenses. So let's first insert a catalog lens. So to do this, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can actually go and open a new lens and there is a choice when you open a new lens to insert a catalog lens. Here I'm just going to open the surface data spreadsheet which I started with that open. I open it up again and if you select a row by left clicking and then right click you can insert a catalog lens. So we can just pick a lens that we'd like to assess here. So we insert that catalog lens and we want to then also assess how far away a distant object would be uh, its image would be from the lens you might image this onto a piece of paper or something like that self luminous objects work well but if you have a window and you can look outside you can try that as well that's a pretty common method in a lab of course you might not have a, a distant source or it might be night may, may not be possible to do that so you would use the lights in the room I'll show how to deal with that in a moment so what we want to do is we want to assess that back focal length and since we have an object we're assuming is extremely far away, 1 times 10 to the 8 is assumed to be very far away. Let's solve for the image location with a paraxial solve here, the axial ray height. And you can see the value we're getting. It's the back focal length. So this, because it's not a thin lens, is not going to be identical to the focal length. And instead we have a separation of the principal planes and some other geometrical optics effects that we have to take into account. So it's a great way for students to see that uh, the thin lens approximation does have some limitations to it. So this is a great starting exercise. One thing we can do with this is let's say we're using the wind, uh, it, you know, a light at the top of the room and then we want to assess what's going on uh, down lower. And let's say that uh, we want to do it for a typical height of a room. So that might be three meters or something like that. So if we do three meters, here the lens is in millimeters. I move this in and as I move this in you will see that this number here below has changed. Let me do that again. 1e to the 20. So when it's in closer it was 47.11. When we move it far out it's 46.26. So it is changing the number. Of course in the lab they would probably want to also assess that thin lens assuming the thin lens is in the middle of the lens. But you can see the numbers are similar between the focal length, the back focal length, and this is just a fairly typical way to at least get an estimate of the focal length of a lens. Now of course you could do the same thing for a negative lens, but you have to be very, very careful when you do that. In order to do a negative lens, what you have to do is you have to put a positive lens that has more optical power with it. So I'm not going to do anything with this, but in Oslo, if you hit this green check mark, you accept your changes. If you hit the X, you will cancel those changes. We go ahead and hit accept here. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to open up a lens that I had previously set up to do this. So this is just a, if you double click on a window, it will update it. So now I've updated this window. You see this is just a positive lens and a negative lens put together. In this case, we need to make sure to have a positive focal length so it will focus. Uh, and we can do our little assessment exercise that the positive lens has a longer, fo uh, has a um, shorter focal length, in other words, more optical power than the negative lens. So in this case, this is a a uh, 25 millimeter focal length positive lens and a minus 50 millimeter focal length negative lens. So we can do that combination and do all the same sorts of things with it. In this case I chose to put two flats together. You would want to be careful not to get the lenses stuck together although they're probably not clean enough in a lab and just some careful handling by the students. Really great exercises to do. So another type of exercise that we can do is set up a Keplerian and a Galilean telescope. So we'll start off with the Keplerian telescope. Same idea that we're going to set this up and we're going to use a couple of catalog lenses. So the Keplerian telescope has 
an objective lens and an eye lens. Now, some of you looking at this might initially be confused. It's fairly typical to set this sort of a system up with the stop actually in the front. That's where your eye would go. So in reality, just the object in that you would look through this to the right. And so the light is really going the other way, but it's a little bit easier to often set up these kinds of systems with the stop in front. I'll show for the Galilean the opposite. So all kinds of great things that students can learn in doing this. So you can insert the lenses. You can see the intermediate image that's necessary with the Keplerian telescope. Another thing is this system is set up. We have to switch this if you go into the surface data spreadsheet under general, make sure you're in the afocal mode if you're doing something like this because it's collimated in both the object space and the image space, both sides of it here. That's a necessary condition. Another thing that we've done is we've just set up infinitely far away object and infinitely far away uh, image, which is another property of the afocal characteristics. Now, when you start this exercise, you might start and just pick a couple catalog lenses and here they are and of course this isn't working correctly at all because we need to set the appropriate distance between the lenses to be a focal <clears throat> and in order to do that what I've done is we're going to use our optimization so here under operands I've inserted this OCM2 and given it a weight of one if we click on this little question mark button it'll go to a help page and the help page for this believe it's under aberration operands it is and it's the axial ray slope so the slope coming from right on axis these green rays here we know that what we want it to do is come out and if it's a focal it will come out and that will have a slope of zero and so if we just set that to the target it's going to try to optimize and make that zero in the premium version of the program, you can also use the PU operand to do this, which is the same value. Or you can also use this OCM2 as the aberration operand. So I have that set up. And now the next thing we can do is we can just go to optimize this. So that's the only thing it's going to do is try to set the distance between. Oh, one more thing is I have a variable set up. And that variable you can get by, let me direct spec here. Uh, in the surface data spreadsheet you can set this as a variable. You can also go into this variable sheet and enter in the data here if you know the surface number and th is for the thickness. In reality we don't really need constraints on here but I'm keeping the defaults. So it's ready to optimize now. To optimize you can use the ITE command or just go to optimize and iterate. This is damply squares. We can just run it with its default values and you can see that it minimizes that particular error and we end up with the configuration that I had before and then specifically what we've done is made the praxial ray here uh, for this marginal ray end up a marginal going through the edge of the stop and on axis is coming out now with a zero angle so it's a great way to set up a little Keplerian telescope these are uh, it's got a little bit more aberration but you can get a higher magnification with it if you want to know hey what's my magnification so the angular magnification of this is actually going to be the ratio of the light that would come in from uh, the, the place that you're looking and then goes into the eye. Because the angle here going into the eye is bigger than the angle uh, for the light as it's coming off of what you're looking at, then it's being magnified. And it's the ratio of those angles gives the angular magnification. It's also equal to the ratio of the focal lengths within a minus sign here it's negative because it would be flipped around if we look at this in this with this Keplerian telescope and if we look at the angular magnification here it says minus 0.245 well in reality uh, we're looking at this system backwards so that's about 0.25 and that would be a 4x and if you look the angle here is about four times what it was coming in Another thing, due to Lagrange invariant, energy conservation, the width of the income of the beam on one side is four times the width on the other side. So the angle is bigger here with a smaller width, and on the other side we have a wider beam with a smaller angle. That's energy conservation, another great lesson for students just learning physics. So the angular magnification that we actually have would usually specify is how much it's being magnified. So it's one over this because we've put the system backwards and it's about a 4x. In terms of the focal lengths of the lens, this uh, lens 
has a the objective lens has a focal length here of 100 millimeters and this eye lens has a focal length of 25 millimeters and it's the ratio of the two gives us that angular magnification well the negative of the ratio of the two the negative of the objective focal length divided by the eye lens focal length really great lessons to do now this isn't the only kind of configuration that you might run into another one that you might see of course is a Galilean telescope and a Galilean telescope similar principle it doesn't actually invert the image what you do is you take that objective lens you send light through but you view it through a negative lens so you're going to look at a virtual image of it through that negative eye lens and so this doesn't form an intermediate image this system is shorter than the Keplerian version and it also uh, is but it also is harder to get a higher magnification out of it so in this case this is only a 2x configuration this is a hundred millimeter the same hundred millimeter focal length lens in the front and then we have a negative 50 millimeter focal length for the eye lens here and then it's the ratio of the two so it's a 2x and if you look here it does have the angular magnification of 0.5 and it's not inverted these are all great things for students that are looking to learn or if you're looking just to do some layouts we can do the exact same trick here uh, with this I have the same merit function and the same variables set up so here you might start like this and then we can go and we can optimize using damply squares and when we do that you can see it sets that distance really really good one last thing that you might want to do is you may be uncomfortable with the fact that this is a 0.5 which really means a 2x and we've modeled it backwards you might want to model it the other way around so you can select the lenses and just reverse them and then there's some other setup that you have to do to actually make this work getting the light entered in so I'm just going to show a version of this that's that I've already set up where I've reversed this around so we reverse this around and this is the lens now reversed around you can see that the angular magnification is a two uh, one thing that I did here is I did set a, a more accurate um, really carefully tracing the rays to fill the, the uh, pupil for the eye correctly in this wide angle mode which is an advanced uh, concept and part of the reason why I prefer to set it up the other way around there's other information that you can do for example like getting out the um, under here evaluate praxial setup this gives a lot of excellent information about this uh, lens in terms of its magnification and other sorts of properties and another thing that we might want to do is we might want to take and look at this lens reversed around the other way again and just kind of compare and you can see the ray paths are quite similar but they're flipped around so these are some basic exercises to do in Oslo very straightforward very easy to use